What's going on everybody, Mortem here, this time bringing you a video about Celasta, Crown of the Magisters, Lost Valley DLC launching today. It is available now. That said, this video is sponsored by Tactical Adventures, the developer of Celasta. I'm a pretty big fan of Celasta. If you watch the channel very much at all, you'll probably know that already. I have reviewed this title in full before, and I will post a link in the description to that review. And in addition to that link, there will be another link to the Steam page for Celasta, because if you choose to jump into the game now, the base game is actually 60% off, and the first DLC, Primal Calling, which included the Barbarian and Druid class, is 30% off. But today we are of course talking about the Lost Valley DLC. Now if you haven't heard much about Celasta at all, it is a very rules as written interpretation of 5th edition D&D. Specifically, a combination of the 5.1 SRD rule set with some of the homebrew content from Tactical Adventures. And while the main campaign that launched with the base game was pretty good. It did nonetheless focus very heavily on the combat, etc., as you might expect. However, the Lost Valley DLC is quite a bit different. For starters, let's talk about everything that comes with this DLC, and then we'll get a bit more granular. With this DLC comes a free update to the base game that is going to add multiplayer, which we'll talk a bit more about in just a moment. But in addition to those things, we also get an entirely new campaign for this DLC. It is a level 1 through 12 adventure, which is the same for the base campaign. However, unlike the base campaign, this one is non-linear and sees you choosing to help one of several factions or none at all. There are side quests, there are quests in general that have multiple ways that they can be completed. And in addition to this, Celasta's Dungeon Maker is also seeing a bit of an update. This will include a mix of free stuff as well as stuff exclusive to the DLC. So there will be new monsters and new environments added to the Dungeon Maker, specifically from Lost Valley. And then in addition to those things, the Dungeon Maker will also see the addition of, for free, a quest dialogue and custom loot table system that will allow you to essentially make your own campaigns properly in their Dungeon Maker. Now, let's talk about each of those things individually a bit. So for starters, multiplayer. As I mentioned, this is a free update to the base game. You do not need Lost Valley to do this. So if you want to play Celasta with some friends, that is an option now. This kind of uses a sort of lobby system to make your games. You'll essentially start a game. You can password protect that. You can actually invite your friends straight from Steam if you should so choose, or they can look up your game title in the multiplayer lobby, if you will and then use the password to get in. The multiplayer is for up to two to four players, which is the amount of characters you can have in a campaign. And I did want to mention that the probably big thing to know here is that a lot of this stuff defaults to whoever the host of the game session is. So if the host owns the Lost Valley DLC, for instance, you don't have to have the Lost Valley DLC to play in a multiplayer session with them. And that works for all of the other stuff as well. A lot of that defaults to the host of the session. This does extend to things like dialogue choices with the host being able to make the final selection. However, the other characters' cursors will appear on screen and they can kind of vote for their conversation options that way, if you will. But the host will be the one actually clicking through the dialogue. And now let's talk about the actual DLC campaign. So as I mentioned, this is a non-linear campaign. The overview for the campaign itself is that you are, of course, playing as four adventurers who find themselves stuck in a valley. The only way out is blocked by a small army of incredibly tough monsters that kind of have the valley impenetrable for the most part to anything but like a small army. So your primary goal for the DLC is to find a way out of this valley. However, your arrival in a valley that hasn't seen outsiders in a very long time sets off a bit of a political disruption between many factions of the campaign. And this is where the non-linear part comes in. You can choose to side with one of these factions, you can choose to side with none of them, you can kill story-important characters provided you have the skills to do so, and if you want, for instance, you could choose a more brute force option, turn right back around and take on that small army of monsters blocking the way out of the valley yourself, which is a very tough battle, but it is doable. And my main takeaway from interacting with all these factions and everything was, for starters, you have a lot of options. So whereas the base main campaign was simply a fairly linear experience and kind of just continued in a straightforward path, as you might imagine, this one is really just all about choices and even a little farther than what faction should you choose to help. You can actually kill basically every NPC in this DLC. 
the quests themselves that the factions and just the side quests that you find in some cases have multiple ways to be completed. Some of these quests will have more dialogue-centric solutions. Some of them will be able to be approached from a more stealth perspective, such as pickpocketing or just not being seen in general. Or, as always, you can take that brute force head-on approach. Now, while new content and a very sizable campaign are always fun, as a quick aside, by the way, this campaign, again, level 1 through 12, I would say is probably just a tiny bit shorter than the main campaign. So in terms of content, there is a significant amount here, as this particular campaign effectively doubles the size of the official content for this title. But while, again, that's all well and good, how can you vary up your playthrough a little more? Well, that comes down to the nine new subclasses coming with this particular update. So each class is going to receive a new subclass that you can play around with. I'll try to throw a list up on screen here as if we talked about them individually, would be here for quite a while. Now, naturally, the subclass for the Barbarian and the Druid do also require the Primal Calling DLC, as you still can't play those classes if you don't have the Primal Calling DLC. But nonetheless, a full new subclass for each of the nine classes available in Celasta. So in addition to the new content, there's even a few new ways to play, which combined with all the ways you can approach the quests in this particular DLC makes this honestly a pretty impressive bit of DLC for a game as it effectively doubles the size of the actual base game. But there you go, guys. There is everything I've got for you on Celasta's Lost Valley DLC. You can expect a proper review of this DLC from me here in a couple of days, more than likely this weekend. But regardless of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. Remember, if you're interested in what you've seen here, there is a link in the description below where you can check it out on Steam for yourself, as there are very sizable discounts to the base game and the first DLC going on through April 21st. But again, thank you, may you wander in wisdom, and have an amazing day.